Hey, how's it going everybody? Timmy aka Echo Side Fiend here. Hope everybody's having a good weekend. I hope you had a Merry Christmas. Hope you got everything you wanted. And I uh, hope everybody's got big plans for New Year's, which is obviously New Year's Eve is tomorrow. And uh, it's bringing us very close, obviously very, very close to the end of 2017, today being the 30th. Um, so obviously as, uh, as Juggalos, you know, ICP had said, let's make 2017 our year, the year of the Juggalo, you know, the 17 and all that shit. So um, I just kind of decided to make a video to kind of discuss whether or not my 2017 was the year of the Juggalo, you know, just for, for me, myself. Obviously, in the Juggalo world, we had uh, some pretty big events. We had the uh, unveiling of uh, Fearless Fred Fury, um, the next Joker's card. Obviously, we had the March, uh, which I unfortunately didn't make it to, but, um, uh, you know, that obviously went great. Uh, it went off without a hitch. A lot of the things people were worried about didn't happen, you know, and uh, everybody I know that went, I know quite a few people that were there, everybody said it was awesome, so uh, obviously we had the first uh, DCG con, uh, obviously just announced the uh, uh, details for uh, next year's, or for the upcoming one, uh, it's going to be in Denver, Colorado, I am, uh, as of right now, I am planning on going, uh, so I'm really looking forward to that, I know some of my uh, uh, Carnival Spirits brothers will be there, so I'm looking forward to meeting some of them, I know Don Chaos said he's going, so uh, I think he lives there, so it'd be kind of pointless for him not to go. Uh, and then I also have a couple friends that aren't Juggalos, but uh, some friends of mine from here uh, in Grand Rapids that live in Denver. So i uh, try to make a point to go visit them while I'm there. So looking forward to that. Uh, but as far as 2017 for me, was it uh, everything it was uh, cracked up to be? Was it everything I was hoping for? Uh, both yes and no. Um, I had, you know, uh, some kind of shitty things happen this year, um, but I also had some positive stuff, so I'm going to kind of go through it, um, and, uh, just kind of, you know, talk about what was good and what was bad for me personally. So, uh, first and foremost, uh, in 2016, uh, mid-2016, uh, my girlfriend and I have, uh, almost seven years parted ways, um, you know, I was sad, and I still, I still am, but, uh, you know, I kind of look back on it, I feel like, you know, the relationship... It probably run its course, but uh, the end was kind of shitty. I pretty much got dumped for another guy, you know, and fucking uh, kicked out of the, the house that we shared. And I ended up having to leave my cat there for a while because I had to move back to my folks uh, for a few months before I could get into this apartment. Um, and uh, so I had to leave my cat for a little while. And then we adopted another cat together, and so she still has that one. And we're still civil with each other, but it still kind of, you know, sucked, you know, pretty much just be thrown aside for somebody else. Like, I literally moved out, and the day I moved out, the dude that she dumped me for moved in, and, you know, so it was kind of kind of shitty. But uh, in the long run, I mean, everything turned out all right. You know, the day after Hollow Wicked, and this is, again, in 2016, um, I, I literally, or two days, I'm sorry, two days after, I got into this apartment, got moved in, uh, moved in with one of my best friends, my friend Jenny, who's my roommate. Um, she's been one of my best, best friends for about ten years. So it's kind of, you know, kind of cool just, uh, you know, kind of just being... Uh, you know, on my own, you know, I mean, I know I have a roommate, but I mean, just, you know, here in my, uh, you know, in my, my own room and all that, you know, it's just kind of nice. And then, uh, so fast forward to the beginning of 2017, and I uh, ended up reconnecting uh, with a girl that I had actually been uh, seeing uh, for uh, uh, about maybe three or four months, uh, about a year before I met Amy, who was the girl that I dated for almost seven years. And uh, uh, this Stacy, um, you know, I really liked her when we were seeing each other, and um, and then she ended up moving. Uh, she moved to Nashville, Tennessee, so we parted ways, and then it was still still probably about a year before I met Amy, or about half a year probably. And um, uh, all throughout the years, uh, we remained friends. We were friends on Facebook and everything, and uh, my roommate, Jenny, uh, had become good friends with her. I, I had met her, met Stacy, and then her and... Uh, uh, Jenny met, and they became really good friends, so, uh, Stacy would always come out here for Jenny's birthday, and so I always saw her around, and, you know, every time I'd see her, it was always kind of like, man, you know, I wonder, you know, how things would have gone if, if she hadn't moved, and, and all that, and, um, so, you know, fast forward to this past January, we reconnected, Jenny kind of set it up, so we'd kind of run into each other, and we hit it off pretty well, and so we, we, it was right at the beginning of January, and literally the next weekend, I invited her to, you know, come out, you know, come up to Grand Rapids because she, uh, she lives like an hour south and, uh, and see if she wanted to come up, uh, here and, you know, go out for a few drinks and we did and, you know, uh, we ended up, uh, I won't go into, you know, graphic detail, but, you know, we ended up, um, you know, 
reconnecting, let's say. And, uh, you know, we ended up starting, uh, you know, became boyfriend and girlfriend, started dating. And um, about six months later, just literally like that, she broke up with me. Like, literally, it was mostly because I couldn't make it to a concert with her. That was pretty much it. And uh, I was flogging Molly here in Grand Rapids, and we bought the tickets, and I had told her when we bought the tickets, I said, there's a good chance I might not be able to go, because it was on a Thursday night, and I work first shift, uh, you know, now, and I work early for a shift. And she was like, that's cool, if you can't go, I'll take Jenny. And then, uh, you know, as it was getting closer, I realized I was not going to be able to go. Uh, for that Friday, uh, they needed me to come in at 3 in the morning, and me and another guy, uh, Kevin, he's another driver, um, we... Had to drive to Battle Creek, which is like an hour and a half, uh, like, you know, early, early in the morning. So we had to be to the plant about three and uh, uh, service Firekeeper's Casino, which is massive. And we had to be back up to the plant by like uh, about, they said between 11 and 12. So they could rewash all the clothes and everything because they had to send it out again that coming Monday. And this was because of a holiday. I forget what holiday it was. but um, And we closed on that holiday and Firekeeper's doesn't, you know, so... Uh, and we had to, I mean, we got down to that casino and we were just flying. I mean, you should have seen us like running down the hallways, you know, picking up mats and, uh, you know, I had to be rested. And so on that Saturday, she called me and broke up with me uh, saying I was selfish and, you know, that, uh, if I cared about her, I would have gone to the concert and that was it. So, <laughs> so that kind of sucked, you know, but, um, uh, you know, you know this was what it was. And that kind of made me step back and be like, well, Maybe she's not who I thought she was, you know, and so, yeah, that was shitty, but, um, so, you know, whatever, but, uh, uh, another, uh, kind of shitty thing was, um, so back in 2005, I ended up finding this band, it was a, a local band here in Grand Rapids, or, I'm sorry, they were from Lansing, but I came across them while they were playing here in Grand Rapids, uh, they're called The Lash, they're like a Celtic rock band, and, uh, if anybody who knows a lot about me, besides ICP and, you know, Juggalo kind of stuff, I'm a huge, huge Irish music fan. I love Irish punk. I love, you know, Flogging Molly that I was going to go see with Stacey. They're one of my favorite bands. Is a band Enter the Haggis is one of my all-time favorite bands. Um, uh, you know, uh, I'm not as into the Dropkick Murphys. I got a little burned out on them, but like the Tossers, uh, the, uh, uh, what's the other one that I love? Uh, 1916 is this band I've been checking out a lot lately. Uh, just awesome fucking bands like that, you know, I love that stuff, and, um, this band, The Lash, uh, were, like, so they're from Lansing, they're, like, a Celtic rock folk band, uh, which I also just like straight-up Irish folk music, too, it doesn't have to be rock or punk, you know, uh, but The the Lash are, like, Irish, uh, folk rock, and, um, so I found them, uh, became a big fan of them, started going all the time, I'd go to Lansing to see them, it's only, like, an hour away, anything they were here in Grand Rapids, I was there, uh, without fail, uh, I'd go, I went all over to see them, always there, and, um, uh, you know, I became good friends with them. Uh, you know, the, the singer, Rob, uh, he would always have me over to him and his girlfriend's house. If they were playing in Lansing, he would, you know, say, come on over and have a few beers and you can just ride with us. I'd crash over there, everything, you know? And, um, so, uh, the, the Lash ended up parting ways. Uh, they were, uh, they had been together for about 10 years before I found them. They were together for about another 10 years. And, um, so they did their final show and then Rob just kind of started doing, uh, you know, a lot of solo stuff. So I was still always going and supporting him. And then he, he formed a new band um, called Dragspell. And uh, I always tried to go see them, and I just couldn't. They were always playing when I, I couldn't make it or whatever. And um, so I ended up not really ever seeing them until uh, this uh, this year, 2017, the day after uh, St. Patrick's Day. They were playing right here in Grand Rapids. And so uh, uh, it was on a Saturday. And so me and Stacy went and saw them. And uh, they were fantastic. Um, you know, I ended up kind of hanging out with the band afterwards. They were playing in uh, at the Bob the big old building it's called right downtown Grand Rapids is this huge, uh, you know, uh, you know building, uh, and there's this bars and there's a nightclub and a brewery. It's all, it's like three or four stories. There's a comedy club in it. So when they got done, we just kind of went and hit up, you know, hit a bar right there and had a few beers and hanging out. And, uh, uh, two weeks later, uh, on, uh April 1st, actually, uh, it would be April 2nd that I found out about it, but I woke up and having a look on Facebook and there's all these messages and posts and, Rob had died of a heart attack the day before. Uh, he was um, loading his gear into a, a, a bar or cafe or something in Lansing. He was going to play a solo show, and he was bringing his stuff in and, um, you know, bringing stuff in and, you know, loading up. And 
went back out to his car, and all of a sudden I said the sound guy, you know, a few minutes later was looking around like, oh, where the hell is he? Went out there and found Rob laying next to his car. He was dead. And he had a heart attack, and he had he had had uh, heart problems. Um, actually, just a few weeks earlier, he'd been in the hospital. I think he had a pacemaker put in. I think uh, earlier, uh, like a year earlier, but he he had some heart issues. He was fifty six. He wasn't you know a youngster anymore, but he wasn't you know old by today's standards. But so that really sucked. He left behind a six year old daughter and uh, his girlfriend that he'd been with for like thirty years. Uh, that was her only kid, uh, uh, but um, uh, she has, uh, his girlfriend uh, has been battling cancer since she was like 21, uh, and she's 40, you'll see, she's, she'd be 46, and uh, so yeah, it's, you know, now she's a you know single mom now, and you know, that sucked, and then, uh, so fast forward to October, um, my friend Dave actually uh, passed away of a heroin addiction, a uh, heroin overdose, you know, due, due to addiction, obviously. Uh, he had been a, a guy known for many, many years. Uh, I knew him. I think I met him when I was 16 and he was like 15, 14. And uh, he'd been in some bands. He's a punk, punk rocker. Uh, he'd been in some bands with some other friends of mine and um, a singer, guitar player. He's a fantastic musician. Uh, he was, you know, he played, he'd you know, like I said, he's a punk rocker, but he'd, he'd play like folk music and he'd write his own stuff and he traveled all over. He actually recorded at Sun Records, uh, you know, where Elvis recorded. He actually recorded some tracks there. He was in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, he was just kind of like doing like street wandering, you know, just kind of uh, drive around and end up someplace and stay there for a while and play shows and stuff. He was, you know, like a, a nomad to the you know fullest extent, you know, and he was lived here in Grand Rapids, but uh, and that's where he passed away, was here in Grand Rapids. But uh, I actually got this picture here. We did a, um, uh, uh, I want to say a memorial for him because he didn't want a funeral. Uh, but uh, you can see this. This is him playing guitar, uh, obviously. Um, I'm going to say probably like five, six years ago, maybe. This is at the Festival of the Arts. And he heard that this guy, if you can see that, it's like one of those people holding, a you know, Christian holding a sign, um, you know, about how everybody's going to hell. And uh, real quick, it says, murderers, rock and rollers, thieves, and all other sinners, Jesus, the Son of God, will judge you, Romans 14, 10. And I think it goes up farther, too, that science kind of cut off. But he heard that guy was down there and, like, yelling at people and everything. So he took his guitar down there and started playing super loud so that guy couldn't yell his shit anymore. And it was fucking great, man. I didn't take the picture, but I was there when this happened, though. And then on the back, somebody else, again, another picture somebody took, and... So that was Dave, man. Dave Bacon, everybody called him. Uh, I was one of few people who knew his actual last name until actually after he passed away, then everybody found out it was Gear and Seth. But for whatever reason, he didn't want people to know that. But uh, I was one of the few who, who knew. And uh, this guy, too, he always tells my friend Ivory, or told, I should say, uh, my friend Ivory, um, that me and her were the only two juggalos that he liked. I don't think he actually had any problem with juggalos, but he was just kind of, he would tell her that. He was like, uh, you and Timmy are the only juggalos I like, so... He was a good guy, man. I miss him a lot, and uh, so that sucked too, you know. And that was just a couple weeks before Hollow Wicked, you know. And so, however, there was a lot of good stuff that happened this year too. I'm not trying to sound like a total downer. Um, again, I go back to Stacy. That was pretty cool that I reconnected with her, and uh, the time that I did have with her, you know, for like six months or so, was was a lot of fun, um, you know. And I was, uh, you know, really happy to have reconnected with her and to to, you know, have a relationship, you know, because before we were just kind of seeing each other, and then it just kind of, she was like, well, I'm going to move, and uh, it was just, you know, just like that, it was done, you know, and so it was kind of cool to actually get the chance to, you know, to, to have her as my girlfriend, and, and it didn't work out, but it is what it is, so, but still, in the long run, I mean, like, uh, to kick the year off like that, and, you know, that with, you know, hoping that things would work out, and obviously it didn't work out exactly the way I wanted, but uh, the opportunity was, was good, and so that was a good way to start the year, you know, and then, uh, you know, just getting into this apartment, I know I moved in in 2016, but, you know, just a couple months before, uh, you know, the 2017, so to, you know, pretty much start the year with uh, finally getting, you know, getting settled in here, because like I said, I did move back to my folks, I love my folks, but as, you know, 39 years old, I don't want to be living at my parents, you know, so to get in here and uh, be able to, uh, I guess it was 38, but, uh, uh, to, you know, get here and get all settled in, to have the, you know, my, uh, my, my friend Jenny, my roommate, just happened to need, uh, you know, a roommate because her, her roommate was moving out with her boyfriend. And, uh, so everything fell into place and I was able to get in here and help Jenny out. So she didn't have to move. And 
to make it so I didn't end up in a one bedroom apartment. Like that was way more than, not that I could afford, but you know, way more than I want to pay. So everything worked out good. Uh, we got a gym that's connected or not connected. It's not connected to the building, but it's, it's, I mean, it's part of this apartment complex. So it's free. Uh, so that's awesome. So I, I ended up canceling my gym membership at the gym I was going to, so I could just start going to this one and it's a nice gym too. So, uh, so that was, uh, you know, that was uh, a nice way to pretty much start the year. So that was, that was a good, good thing. Uh, and then overall, uh, the big thing for me was starting my new position at my work, um, at the company I work for, Syntas. I've been there for 19 years. I've been there for a long time. I love the job. I love working there. I love the, the, um, the, you know, the, the company itself. I love all the, the management, mo most everybody, uh, there I get along with great. Uh, I got some good friends in management that have helped me along, uh, to get that position uh, that I wanted. Um, and, uh, so I moved into route driving, um, and I put in for it in 2016 and I got it in 2016, but it was like six months when they literally told me that I got it. They're like, it's going to be a while before we can move you because of the job I was doing was not just something that they could just fear you're taking over this now. You know, they had to find someone that they knew was going to stay there. They had to know, I, I had to train them. It's not, it was, it's running the wash alley. We called it. It's all the washers and dryers. Um, it's all automated. It's not hand, you're not hand loading stuff. It's all automated and it's, it's a complicated job. And, um, so they needed to make sure they had somebody that was going to be, you know, sharp enough to learn it and to learn it fairly quickly when I started training them. So it was about six months, uh, before I moved into the, uh, uh route driving position. And then I had to do 13 weeks of training. And I started March, uh, 6th, actually Monday, March 6th. And I trained with, uh, uh, this girl, Vanessa, who's been a, a driver for 15 years, I think. And, uh, she's like the 15th top driver in the company, you know, which I mean, company wide, you know, not just, not just here in Grand Rapids, you know? So she's awesome. Uh, I couldn't ask for a better, uh, better person to train with. We ended up becoming pretty good friends. You know, she's an absolute sweetheart. I love her to death. Um, and, uh, she really helped me out and she still does, you know, I can, uh, I'll be out running somebody else's route and I, I run into a problem. I'll, I'll call her and she'll help me through it. You know, uh, you were like, you know, if I can't figure something out on the route computer or don't know what to do with this or that, you know, I'll call her and she'll be, like, Oh yeah, real easy. You know, the, I mean, uh, you know, she's always there no matter what, you know, so I, it was awesome to train with her. Um, really, she really prepared me for it. Um, it's still a little bit stressful, you know, cause I'll, uh, end up running somebody else's route that I've never run before. And, you know, you got to find everything, you got to find your way into the building and, you know, find the places to park and where to go in and where everything goes. But when you do figure it out, it's awesome. It's this great feeling. You're, you know, going through doing all this stuff and putting all the, you know, any late pieces that, you know, kind of get left behind, you know, like, uh, you know, it's uniforms, you know, you're going through the count sheets, looking at them and you're like, okay, here's that, here's that, here's that. And you find everything and you're like, awesome, man, I got this, you know, it's just, a, it's a good feeling to get inside find where everything goes, everything goes smooth, you know, there's some days it doesn't always go smooth, but when it does, it's, it's really rewarding. And, and, uh, I, I'm just, I'm so looking forward to getting my own route. My, uh, my route will not be a uh, uniform though. It's going to be just, uh, mats and towels, which I actually kind of prefer, uh, running, uh, people's uniforms, uh, route, uniform routes. It can get pretty stressful, you know, and their size changes and repairs and, new custom or, uh, new, uh, new employees at a customer or just new customers too, uh, you know, getting added on and things aren't added on properly and you got to fix it. You know, I'll get back to the plant after running somebody's uniform around. I'll, I'll be there for like two hours. You get done with a, uh, FS route. We call it facility services, which is just the mats and towels. You come back, print up your report, you go check in and you're gone you know, because there's no repairs or anything like that to do. So, uh, so far I've said before, I've got one day, uh, Friday, that's mine. It's going to be Route 64. Um, and uh, it's uh, uh, on, just on Friday right now, but I'm going to be taking over a guy's Monday and another guy's Wednesday. Um, and then, so I'll just have to get a Tuesday or a Thursday because uh, full-time is just four days a week. And then I'll be all uh, on a full-time route. Um, and I will uh, no longer be hourly. I'll be uh, salaried with the base pay, uh, commissions, volume bonuses, renewal bonuses, uh, and that's the, the kind of the next thing I wanted to come to is just the, the money and the success that I've had so far in this position and, uh, and how much more I've got to go, you know, and that's, there's so many opportunities to make money. I know money is never everything, but I've never had a job before, even like working at Synthas, which I've been for years. I've never been like totally financially secure. I do good. I do fine. I've always, you know, gotten along fine, but I've never, I want to like not have any money like worries. I don't need to be rich, but I don't need to, I would like to not be worried about money all the time. And 
this position is going to be able to, uh, you know, do that for me. And so I'm like, just like that close, you know, as soon as I get those, uh, those days all filled in, um, it'll be just, uh, uh, you know, not, not a license to print money or anything, but, uh, you know, a lot of money, uh, coming in that I didn't have before. And I'm already doing better now. I like just going right from the wash alley to, uh, the service department. I got a dollar 75 raise, you know, I'm making $18 an hour, dollar 50, I'm sorry, dollar 50 raise. And, um, so, you know, that right there just already helped me out and I get quite a bit of overtime too. So that helps. But, um, you know, the other thing is I've always got to like, when I get back, I'm always trying to make sure I get my 10 hours. Uh, you know, if I didn't get, you know, uh, you know, a lot of hours the day before or something. So that gets pretty stressful to make sure I get my 40 at least, you know, and it's uh, like when I get all, you know, settled in, uh, you know, four day route, not gonna have to worry about that anymore. I'll be able to get back to the plant, and just cut out and leave, you know, and, uh, and then like, and you're. Uh, when you're full-time, uh, employee, you know, with a full-time route, I should say, cause I'm a full-time employee, but full-time route, if you end up getting called in on your day off, uh, you get $150, you know, and a $150, uh, payout for coming in. So there's just so many, uh, you know, great things that, that are just, they'll be, uh, coming down the line. There's, uh, you know, contests, they always have, uh, you know, cash payouts for contests, you know, for new products you're adding and, and all that. And it's just a, a really really good job. I'm really happy I got it. Um, like I said, right now it is a little stressful, but once I get all settled in on my own route, it's going to, you know, I'll, you know, just the day I have right now, it's Friday and it's just, I've already to this point where I just fly through it. Cause I know it, you know, backwards and forwards already. And it's like, it only took me a few weeks to learn it all. I don't have to use GPS when I'm driving out there. Cause it's, a, it's an hour away. It's in an area that I wasn't familiar with, but I don't have to use GPS anymore within just a few weeks. I was done with that, you know? So and uh, the other two days I'm taking over right here in Grand Rapids, so that'll be be uh, be nice. So looking forward to it, and uh, so that all again all started in 2017. Um, and so in the long run, I feel like even though I had some kind of shitty you know things happen, you know, a couple of my friends passing away, um, you know, and, you know, relationship that I had high hopes for not working out. Uh, I also had a lot of good stuff, you know, and um, and again I'm looking forward to just. Uh, Keep moving on in my uh, position at work and uh, keep being successful and you know uh, my goal is to be one of the top drivers at our location i got to get my own full route first but once i do uh, i want to be recognized as one of the top drivers at the at the plant and that's something i'm focused on and something i fully intend to do you know, don't have to be number one but i want to be right up there so um but yeah that's pretty much it so um I hope, uh, anybody watching, I hope you had a good 2017. Uh, let me know. Did you have some ups and downs? Uh, did you accomplish everything you wanted to? And, uh, did it seem to uh, live up to the way Jay had said, like, you know, make it yours? Did it, did it work out that way? So I hope it did. So, uh, beyond that, that's pretty much all I got. So if you, I know this is a little bit longer. I hope you watched all the way through. Uh, if you did, thank you. As always, thank you for the support. Thank you for watching. This is Timmy, AKA Echo Side Fiend, and I will catch you in the next one.